So my heroes are, and to give an answer to that, I wouldn't even single out a person or a company. What I'd say is, it could be a new kid on the block. So what I mean by that is, a new kid on the block could drop a certain gem that I think, do you know what, that's a gem and I'm gonna take that gem and use that and apply that to what I'm doing. So that new kid on the block could actually be my hero indirectly. Hi, I'm Romero. This is Property Insiders. So I think I remember one of my early ones, which was, I think I bought a property back in 2014. And I remember buying it and it was kind of my first exposure to kind of, I think they still cast it as structural issues. I'm sure they do, um, but it was, it was, it was, it was damp and it was actually problems with a few floorboards in the property. So I, I don't think it's major structural problems, but I think that's how they try to classify it on a valuation report. Um, the dam issues were quite funny actually to be fair because there was thick clay tiles, Victorian tiles, quite thick like this in the kitchen and you could smell something but again being quite new to property I didn't know what it was so as soon as we took the first clay tile up we then realised that all of the kitchen area which wasn't massive it was probably about 15 square metres was all soil so old clay soil and me being quite young I thought okay let me see how hard this is took my shovel out at that age because I was quite new to property thinking I'm going to help out reduce the cost and it was a nightmare there was about four of us digging at one point for four or five hours you don't get anywhere but yeah this is this is what I always do it's just just me the worst thing is you buy a brand new pair of uh, I don't know what's the most expensive trainers I don't know Christian Louboutins or something like that 700 quid then you walk into a building site and then that's it they're gone but yeah, I'm a, I'm a trainers man, I like my trainers. Okay, let's see if I'm into the gym today. The door's not opening. Oh, there we go. So this is the former um, bank building. Um, before there was like a cashier just over this section um, and all that was like various different rooms over there um, and that was just like the foyer area of people that came into the bank mm -hmm. um, so all behind here it was all like cordoned off you couldn't get back past this section so it was just obviously stood walls um, I'll show you the, um, the vault as well you got the old, old vault in here Um, in terms of with this one though there has been a problem um, so that been a problem as you notice the tram system's outside so in terms of inside here although we have joists and the fine is in the floor joists we actually have to create a floating floor so we've got to create like another fake floor on top that doesn't sit on the existing joists because the existing joists actually go into the brick the brick vibrates from the tram okay so this perspective is where i think you'll actually come across a hurdle or a problem that you have to then overcome where I started to for me it was a case of just being young like everyone else you're 15 16 17 um, I guess playing outside with your friends going to school going to college um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't really go as far as saying okay mixed up in big trouble but you see you see other people getting involved in certain things that are, are kind of going a bit left and not the right way so I think at that point you always get kind of at a crossroads yourself and saying okay which way do I want to go okay do I want to go that path or do I want to go a different path and I think I kind of stood there and said to myself do you know what I want to I'm not saying be like someone who's with a hammer but just be someone in life that can set some kind of legacy or have my name somewhere on some kind of building for example there was a time where um, I was selling memory cards at college Okay, if anyone that remembers phones, I think it was like Nokia. I'm sure it might have been like 3310s and some of the Samsung phones. They had a little microchip in the phones. Mm -hmm. um, I put a post up a few months back where I actually found the order that I made on Amazon for these memory cards. Um, and literally, I had I ordered about 
25 or sorry about 35 memory cards so i took a risk there was about seven pound or so each um, i ordered five to start with went to college i said oh look does anyone want one of these carving warehouse was selling them for about 30 pound i said look 20 quid for these sold about three that first day that same night i went home and placed the order for about 30 memory cards spent about uh, roughly 200 quid or something like that i then went and sold all those memory cards and the reason i remember that transaction and that period of time is because that was probably my first thousand pound that i went out there and actively raised myself not going to work and getting paid x amount for working the shift this is me actually saying i'm gonna buy and sell a product and have a bit of revenue that same one thousand pound bought me my first vehicle which is a fiat punto i went to auction and bought that vehicle that vehicle had problems from the get-go okay i wiped my account out to be honest that thousand pound i raised i wiped my account out probably was left with like 40 quid okay that vehicle i probably drove it two weeks and the head gasket went on it so i thought Do you know what this was the wrong choice to make. I then got rid of the car, put the car back into auction, got about 800 pound back for it. So I made a loss on that transaction. What did it teach me? It taught me that sometimes you have to wait in life for certain things. And it also taught me that that money could have been better used elsewhere. That money, okay, still formed part of that 23,000 pound figure that I had in my, uh, that I said a moment ago. It was in there somewhere, okay? So although it went, I sold something, came back, it was in that 23 somewhere. So although it might have only been 500 pound worth of that 23, that thousand pound of those memory cards at 16 or 17 years old, back in 2003, I think it was on my um, post, is the same thousand pound that went towards my deposit. It's the same house now in 2021 from 2013 that pays me 550 pound a month, okay? With a mortgage of roughly 200 quid. So if you look at the investment over that period of time, and even another 20 years time from now, if I was to sell that asset, which I would never sell it because my little baby, my first one, but if I was, the return on that early groundwork is outrageous and, and outstanding. Uh, moving on from there, I'll tell you in terms of the losses, I always, for years and years, said that I never had a loss. Um, I can actually now say I have had a loss um, in terms of not fulfilling the transaction, but what happened is I got a bit carried away and as I started to level up, I was still buying a lot of derelict properties at auction. Um, I was buying a lot of derelict properties, extending them um, or looking to demolish them and rebuild them. And I then thought, yeah, I'm ready. I've got the, one, the, the funds there to go and buy whatever piece of land is out there. Um, doesn't matter. The purchase price could be 400K. It doesn't really phase me. Um, I went out there, bought a piece of land. And in fairness, I believe the price was 210, something like that. And the price wasn't the problem. But because I bought so much from auction, I was confident that I knew what I was doing at auction. Okay, I knew that I could check the title deeds myself. Okay, and on a lot of properties I used to buy, there was no second charges registered. On this one, I looked at it and thought, okay, a big player in the game had a covenant on this land, but I looked at it and thought, okay, I think that's something I can overcome. But this is where you get carried away a little bit and without the right guidance from the legal team, because I, I thought I can deal with this one myself, that covenant was a deadly covenant. So although the land had planning permission, that particular home builder or home buyer that built a thousand houses on that estate beforehand mm. sold the land to someone else who then sold it to someone else who then was trying to sell it to onto me they had a covenant that said only restaurants can actually be built on that land mm. so what does that mean it means i go to the home buyer um, office who's in nottingham the main office where i live went in there spoke to kind of not the director but someone that's kind of high up and said look how much do you guys want to take this covenant off the land they then turn around at that stage and say well yeah, we got paid 200 grand 10 years ago, but the GDV now is 1.7 mil. So we want mm, probably about 10%. They then turn around and say, we want 170 grand off you, mate. So I then turn around and say, do you know what? This deal is not feasible for me to pay them 170 and buy the land and make what am I going to make at the end? So I then walked away from that deal. What did it cost me at that stage? It cost me my initial 10% deposit at auction. So it cost me um, that kind of 20K or so with legal fees and stuff like that. So that was, a, that was a loss, but again, it's a learning point of you approach them beforehand, which is that big home buyer, or you, you go and get the right advice on what, what is the implications of that covenant. So no, currently it's actually a four bed bungalow. There's three bedrooms upstairs, one downstairs four bed bungalow, one bathroom. So what we're gonna do here is actually keep it as a four bed, put an ensuite downstairs, keep the family bathroom upstairs and also add like a WC toilet upstairs as well. Um, in terms of going back to where I said that I don't do the simple projects, mm -hmm. 
yes, this is a simple cosmetic change in the kitchen and bathroom. Mm -hmm. However, the main problem was structural subsidence. Okay, so come outside with me and I'll show you um, evidence of subsidence. And what we're now doing is putting the heli bar, heli fix and the resin in there as well to actually keep the brick together. So if you, um, so we're gonna jump up here. I don't know if you can get up here as well, but you can see the tie of the bar. Okay, so you see the bar in there with the resin behind it. Okay, because the brick had started to expand and con Shifting. Yeah, shift and contract and move apart. That helps to tie it together. Mm. And then you put the resin and the mortar line back at the front and it will stop it from moving in the future. That reason alone makes a valuer say to something like this, it's in a bad condition and the house is moving. And down here as well, you can see. Yeah. Also in there. Okay, it means it's a mortgageable with a normal uh, mortgage company like a Halifax or a NatWest or any other buy to let company. So, really, it's for specialist people that are buying it cash, as I was saying, or potentially if you've got experience, then you can still get lending or funding on something like this. Um, again, the experience is key. I talk about the fact of why not work with someone for free that's on a bigger project. The reason I say that, it goes on your development CV. So when you then go to a lender in the future and say, look, I need X amount for this or two new builds or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. they then turn around to you and say, that's fine. Who's your architect? Who's your builder that's building those bills? You're more than likely going to get the money. Why? Because you work with someone years before for free of charge. Mm -hmm. And I can give you examples where I've done something similar where I work for free or a very low amount in order to get it on my CV. So when I then go back and say, I want to build 10 houses or I want to build 10 apartment blocks, they say, where's your experience? I then say, yeah, look, here's the photos here where I was at that place and here's me talking at that place, at that place nine years ago. Oh. I have the experience. They then turn around and say, that's fine, here's your terms we're good to go so something like this or something like a piece of land with a dead building on anything doesn't matter if you can't get inside the building you can still get lending or funding on it future plans so for me yeah it's always good to level up and for me i always say like when we were talking earlier regarding the um setting the limit high and saying look i want to buy a buy to let and not a first time buyer house same with the houses i'm, I'm doing bills at the moment one unit two unit 10 apartment blocks or 10, 10 flats in apartment blocks so why not level up as much as possible why not have 300 units in one apartment block why not have 100 houses on a piece of land um, i work with a, one of my um, builders at the moment that digs my foundations and footings he's doing they're doing foundations for 150 units on plots of land so why not have that aspiration to be the next barrett homes for example and for anyone going into property i always say the same thing set your target as high as possible and that's exactly where i'm looking to do the same thing.